iRacing just released a big update, and this one's an even bigger deal for VR. They finally added dynamic foveated rendering for OpenXR devices that have built-in eye tracking. Basically, it sharpens exactly where you're looking, giving you some much needed extra performance overhead. Without diving headfirst into the weeds, it really comes down to a couple of important elements. Quad views with dynamic foveated rendering with eye tracking. Quad views rendering, instead of rendering each eye as one flat image, iRacing supports splitting the view into four zones per eye. This allows the GPU to push higher detail where it matters most, in the area of your fovea, where your eyes are actually looking. It then renders lower detail in your peripheral vision where you don't notice the drop in sharpness. iRacing has been supporting quad views for a while now, and it's currently the only sim to do so, because it's not something that can be added as a mod. The title itself must have it built in. iRacing and quad views is not new, but up until now, it was static quad views. What is new is dynamic foveated rendering powered by eye tracking. So now it actively follows your gaze in real time. Wherever your eyeballs move, the sharp sweet spot moves too. It's like having the best possible resolution only where you're looking, which saves GPU power without sacrificing immersion. As a big bonus, you should get better frame rates and smoother performance on the same hardware. Sharper detail exactly where you're focusing, like brake markers, apexes, and mirrors. Less wasted rendering on the edges of your vision, which means VR can finally look and feel closer to real life clarity, in theory. Important to note though, your headset has to natively support eye tracking, like the Pimax Crystal Super or the modded PSVR 2. Also important, you only get this smarter rendering if you have an NVIDIA 2000 series card or better. So if you fulfill all of these prerequisites, this is a potential game changer. For the test, I'll be running two headsets, the Pimax Crystal Super with its built-in eye tracking and the PSVR 2, which thanks to an awesome community mod now supports eye tracking and eye racing as well as other titles. Huge shout out to the modders who made that possible. If you'd like to know how to set up your eye tracking on PSVR 2 on PC, head over to Overtake GG. There's a link in the description. I made a full guide. And no, sadly, I won't be running the Quest 3 for these tests because, surprise, surprise, it doesn't even have eye tracking. So it can't benefit from these changes in the same way. Side note, on top of all that, iRacing has updated their texture compression, meaning better visuals, improved GPU performance, and even slightly faster load times. But let's test all that out in VR and see how it does. All right, so starting out with the Pimax Crystal Super, this is just to get a baseline. I don't have quad views running or foveated rendering or anything like that. So I just want to see what it's like without anything. Um, right now I'm at 78, 77. So I have the headset set to 90 Hertz. So I'm nowhere near what I need to be. In iRacing, I have pretty medium settings. Uh, I don't have everything set to ultra low, but I don't have everything set to ultra high either. So somewhere in the middle. And this track is pretty sparse, so not like oh down in the 60s okay this is with no one on track let's try this in a race real quick and see what happens 66 i'm starting out and i'm at the front of the grid so i'll let some ai pass and see what happens doesn't seem to be the ai that causes any lags or dipping but uh oh i'm in the 60s so let's switch over to quad views and see how it fares okay so i'm back on track and i have quad views enabled and wow, what a boost. I'm already hitting 90. Visually, this really looks the same. I don't see any difference. It's not noticeable when you're actually driving. I think the recorded image, you'll see some, you'll see some blur on the fringes of the, of the image, but while you're driving, it's, it's really, really clear. Wow, this is a huge boost if you think about it. I was in the 60s without quad views running, so. Okay, we'll jump the race and see how it fares. Very, very smooth. No jitters, no lags. I'm mid-pack now. Coming on the pit lane where it's heaviest. Locked at 90. Wow. That is so, so cool. Let's try some other tracks and some other conditions and let's see how it, how it compares. Okay, let's put this a bit more to the test here. Uh, Sebring in the LMP3 and I already got 90 so that's a good sign. This area is pretty heavy so usually there's a drop but still holding 90. 
Perfect. Let's jump straight to race and see what it does. This is just crazy how well it runs. To hold 90 with that many cars on a track like Sebring. That is pretty monumental. I am impressed. One full lap and stable 90 frames. So more than usable in VR. This is actually ideal. But let's try some night racing. Really put it to the test at Daytona now. That'll be the stress test. Starting off at 90, so looking promising. This is a brutal track, though. It has so many assets to render and nighttime with headlights. No issues so far. No AI around, so that helps it a bit. But this, this area is extremely heavy with all the people. Wow. Let's jump straight to race and see what it does. All right, let's see what happens when the AI passes me. They don't wipe me out. Oh, uh, they had a drop there. I'm in the 70s. Just barely in the 70s. It's still fluid, though. It's still smooth. This is right at the edge, but I think lowering a few more settings, I could probably keep it at 90 in most cases. Well, this is the area where there's a dip, I noticed. So let's see what happens here. Nope. It might have been the particles that came off my car when I... Oh, no, here's a... Oh! Here's a little bit... Yeah, now I'm in the 70s there. Just barely. I mean, 79, I think, is the lowest it's gone so far. When the field spreads out, I think it'll be just fine. But it's this, uh, this kind of bunched-up state, which, to be fair, doesn't last very long. Let's do one last final test with the Pimax Crystal Super. Let's uh, see how it does with uh, some rain. All right, here we are, Suzuka, my favorite track in the whole world. I can see standing water, lots of raindrops, heavy reflections on the road. Still holding 90. One of the pluses of the Pimax Crystal Super is its resolution. And here you can take full advantage of that. But let's jump to a race and see how it compares. Pretty much holding 90 everywhere right now. And this spray is really well optimized. Because I don't get any drops from, from the spray. What would an iRacing test be without Oval? So may I pass me again? Ooh, there was a big dip. I'm down in reprojection, so half the frame rate right now. But yeah, this is a very, very heavy track as well. Uh, things are right up close. All the assets are right up close and abundant. So yeah, I'm not that surprised, I have to say in retrospect. I think I was being a tiny bit optimistic. And I think this time it is the AI that's uh, making the tank because the track itself was all right. I think I'd have to reduce heavily the crowds uh, and the settings. Which is a bit sad because it's a big part of the immersion here. But as I said, I'm not too surprised. Okay, so let's perform the same test, but with the PSVR 2, which has a modded version of eye tracking. Uh, let's try it out without any quad views or anything additional. Let's see what the raw frame rate is. Uh, the upside and the downside to the PSVR 2 is that you must run it through Steam VR. The good thing is that I can run FPS VR, which shows me a lot more data. It's a lot easier to get the data. I can see already that I'm dropping a ton of frames. My frame rate is dipping a ton, getting a lot of stutters. And my TPU time is, wow, it's really terrible. It's uh, way above what I need. I am running 120 hertz in the PSVR 2, which is a, one of the main benefits of it compared to the Pimax Crystal Super is that you can run 120 hertz if, if you can keep 120 frames. Now the PSVR 2 has a lower resolution, so in theory I should be able to get 120 FPS uh, with the right settings. Let's just try a lap without quad views and let's see what happens. 
Right now, I'm really not doing good at all. I'm maybe pushing between 60 and 80 frames. Getting up into the 110s. So let's turn on eye tracking and quad views and see what happens. All right, so here we are back with quad views enabled and eye tracking and just checking that eye tracking is actually working. Not seeing any stutters. Don't seem to be dropping any frames right now. Let's jump straight into race. My frame time, my GPU time is well below six milliseconds, so that's really good. Middle of traffic right now, still 120. Similar to the Pimax, this is looking really good. A nice amount of overhead to keep 120 frames, so very smooth. So let's move on to the other tracks and do the same testing. All right, here we go, Sebring. 120 frames, looking good. I'm still staying right where I need to be. Not getting any drop frames at all. My frame time is very low, very low CPU usage. About 37%. Let's jump straight to race. Solid 120 still. So smooth. Even in traffic, it's just so smooth. So Sebring at 120 frames, 120 hertz is definitely possible. All right, here we go. Daytona at night, uh, 110, 106, 97. Struggling a bit here. Down to 76. Almost going into reprojection. Back up to 120 here. Let's jump into race and see what it does. All right, let's see what it looks like in race. Starting off with 120. Ooh, down to 116. Uh, down in the 70s again. So it, it is struggling here at night. It's playable, but it's a bit jittery. When it spreads out just a little bit, it does better. Overall, though, I think it's, it is struggling here. I mean, even if I had it set to 90, which is the minimum for the PSVR 2, it would struggle. All right, here we go. PSVR 2 in the rain. So alone, it looks all right. That's not the real test. Let's jump straight to race. I'm dropping down to 113. So it's not entirely stable yet. It'll be interesting to see what happens with all of the spray in the beginning. Will it massively drop? It's dropping, but not a lot. Ah, uh, ran into the puddle. Down to 100. It's not dramatic yet. I'm not seeing a lot of stuttering. I am dropping a lot of frames. Mm. The CPU time is really through the roof right now. So alone it seems to do fine. I think it's mostly the cars that make it tank. Let's see what damage looks like. Huh? Kept 120 frames. <laughs> All right, here we go, Bristol. The most insane track ever built. As expected, I got 120 frames. No issues so far. No stuttering. Smooth. Really good. It is daytime practice session. There's not a lot of people in the stands, so... Definitely has an effect on overall frame rate. Let's see what happens with a couple AI. Didn't flinch. Let's jump straight to race then. So far so good. With the Pimax, the problem was when the cars got up to speed, it started to just absolutely tank. Let's see if something similar happens here because right now I'm at 120. But once we get up to speed, that is the end result. 
Let's stay at 120. It's looking really good, actually. Wow. Not seeing any problem. And on a track like this, where you're so close to basically every object in the entire track, it's, it's pretty amazing to, to be able to hold 120 frames. That combined with the color of the OLED screens, it's just jaw-dropping stuff. So there you have it. The comparison we did really says it all. With all the new features turned off, the performance on both headsets was not even close to optimal, as much as 15 to 25 frames off the mark. But with quad views, eye tracking, and foveated enable, performance really shot through the roof. I was actually kind of shocked at how much it improved the frame rate. The Pimax Super has a massive resolution of 3840 by 3840, but it still held a solid 90 FPS in most situations. There were a couple of exceptions where performance dipped. Daytona and Bristol, for example, running a full grid at night. I mean, it was a full on stress test and really the most taxing scenario. I'm pretty sure a few tweaks in the graphics settings would help bump it enough to get a stable experience. The PSVR 2, I was able to run at 120 Hertz. To be fair, it's not pushing nearly as many pixels as the Pimax but it was pretty much locked at 120 FPS most of the time. One of the exceptions again was Daytona, although for whatever reason, Bristol had no issues at all. I have to say, massive credit to iRacing devs for supporting this kind of tech. It shows real commitment to VR, and it takes sim racing to a whole new level of performance and immersion. And it might even mean for some of you the difference between having to upgrade hardware or not, and that's huge. I really hope that other sims develop in this direction because it's clearly a win for VR users. If you enjoyed this test, please drop a like and subscribe to Overtake for more sim racing content and VR content. Let me know in the comments which headset or sim racing title you'd like to see me put through its paces next. Until then, I'll see you on track.